Um, no, Patrick, our pastor and his family are um, in Missouri. Patrick's um, son, nephew, Cole, had a benefit on Friday, and then today Patrick is actually getting to baptize his niece. And um, when we talked about this as a board that he would be gone, I said, oh, well, that's great for your mom. He said, yep, it's great for her. So he also gets to be with his mom on Mother's Day. And when we were talking probably over six months ago at a uh, board meeting, we were discussing the need to support Patrick, support our pastor, in making sure that he had time to get away and time to retreat. And as we discussed that, it came up that, well, he shouldn't have to preach every Sunday. And it would be a great opportunity, a great idea, if the elders stepped up and each elder would take a Sunday and give Patrick a chance to have a break. And I was in that discussion, I thought, that's a great idea. Give our pastor a chance to have a break. Elder does a message. You know, they've all got great messages. Wait a minute. I'm an elder. That means I have to get up front and I have to talk. One of the things that kind of made me not want to be an elder in the first place was getting up front and doing the little message, the communion message. I don't like public speaking. I don't like being up here. But um, God spoke to me and worked threw me through that and told me, you know, it's, it's your fear that's not getting you up here, not, you know, it's, it's your will, not mine. And so now I'm up here giving the big message because God won out over my selfishness and my fear. And um, one of the things I wanted to share with you was I found a quote that says, the mark of being a great leader is to know when to retreat and to dare to do it. And one of the reasons we had that discussion as the elder board was because Patrick brought it up and said, you guys are going to have to keep me accountable and make sure that I take these breaks. And so I want to let you know that as an elder board, we're attempting to do our best to do that. And that Patrick must, according to this quote, be a great leader because he is willing to take a break and to dare to do it and is daring enough to leave and be gone and leave someone like me up here in charge of the big message. So you can all tell him how great it was and we'll just go from there. So I was thinking about what on earth am I going to talk about today? Um, when we were talking about what days Patrick was going to be gone, he said, well, I'm going to be gone on Mother's Day. And I thought, I'll take Mother's Day. I'm a mom. Great. No problem. Well, then I started looking online for ideas, and I found several different pages online that said, pastors, really, that's the hardest sermon they have to preach. Because most of them are guys, and they have no idea what about what's going on about Mother's Day. So I thought, great. I get the hardest message of the whole year. Perfect. So I thought about Mother's Day. I'm a mom. What can I talk about? But then as I thought about Mother's Day, I thought, well, Mother's Day is one of those holidays, like Amy mentioned, that isn't necessarily a happy holiday for everybody. There are people who, who have lost their moms. There are people that had, have difficult relationships with their moms. There are people that are not moms for whatever reason. And so even on this day that's happy for a lot of us, there are those that are struggling with it. So I didn't want to talk too much about Mother's Day because of that situation. So the other idea I had running around in my head was we just had come off of this amazing board retreat, which I'm sure a lot of you have heard different people, different of the leadership board share about how great that retreat was. And when Patrick and I were trying to figure out what we were going to do, he um, sent me a link to the website for the St. Joseph's Retreat Center up in Tipton, which is where we went. And so I got online and I looked at this website and I turned to Tim and I said, this place is like heaven. I mean, there's these quiet places you can go and just be with God. This place looks wonderful. I'm like, I want to move in. So then Patrick contacted me and said, hey, let's go check this place out. Let's see if it's as good as it looks on the website. So we went up there, and we took a tour. And after the tour, we came back, and I was talking to Cammie, and I said, Cammie, I want to be a nun. Because <laughs> this, this is where the, nun, the, the nuns live up at this retreat center. And she said, I, I don't think they'll let you be a nun. <laughs> but that goes back to the Mother's Day thing, so it all, it all ties in together. So because I'm a mom, I guess I can't be a nun, so i got to do what I can do. And while we were taking this tour, the woman that led us on the tour um, told us that they have silent retreats. And I just thought that was an amazing concept, that you could go and be in silence, which again, for me being a mom, is something that I don't get often. Um, for those of you that know my kids, silence is not something they do. Um, Kate, they are only silent when they sleep, 
and Kate has only been silent when she sleeps since she got her tonsils out a couple months ago. So still don't get a lot of silence at my house. So thinking through all these things, through Mother's Day and the retreat, um, I decided that I was going to talk on the topic of retreat. And the verse that the Lord gave to me is Romans chapter 12, verse 2, which is, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. As I was wrestling with this topic of retreat and how I was going to talk about it, about 4 o'clock in the morning when it was silent at my house, um, God kind of spoke to me and I said, okay, I'm a teacher by nature. That's what I went to school to be. So, you know, do what you know. And one of the things they taught us about in teaching was to ask the who, what, where, why, when, how questions, like when you write a paper. So I thought, okay, I can talk about the who, what, why, when, where, how of retreat. And then when I started to do that, I realized, okay, that works, but I don't like the order. So I've switched the order around. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the what, if I can find the right card. Um, and the what of retreat is basically the definition. So what is retreat? Retreat is drawing back to God. When I had talked to Tim about our board retreat, he said, the word the concept of retreat has always seemed weird to me. I'm like, what do you mean weird? I grew up in the church. My parents went on retreats. I've heard of women's retreats, youth retreats. It's not, you know, that's what I think of. I said, what do you mean it's weird? He said, well, when I hear the word retreat, I think of the military. I think of the opposite of charge. So the opposite of charge being retreat, run away. So why are our, is our board getting together, and why are they running away? And so the, the definition he was thinking of is an act or process of withdrawing, especially from what is difficult, dangerous, or disagreeable. That is not what God wants us to do. He does not want us to withdraw from the world, the things that are disagreeable and dangerous. So that is not the definition of retreat I'm talking about. I'm talking about the definition of retreat, which is a period of seclusion, retirement, or solitude. And actually, the word retreat comes from the French, which means to draw back. So I want you to think of retreating not as running away from the world, but as drawing back to God. Now, as I was wrestling with this, trying to figure out how I was going to explain this, I thought, well, is it not running away, and it is drawing back to God, but that doesn't really, it wasn't making sense in my head. And I realized, well, it's not one or the other. It's a bit of both. Because God is the opposite of the things of the world. So as you are drawing back to God, you are in turn drawing away from the things of the world. So you're not, it's more the purpose of it. You're not running away from the world. You're not retreating. You're heading towards God, which takes you away from the things of the world. So the definition of retreat is to draw back to God. And one of the things that kind of struck me this Easter was even Jesus took retreats. I don't know why I suddenly realized it this year, but I did. And so the next point is the who. Who retreats? And the answer is simple, you. Retreating is for everyone. And you can go alone or you can go with others. So retreat is for anyone who wants to get closer to God. It's not just for the leaders of the church. It's not just for the pastors. It's not just for those women who go off to their women's retreat. All you guys wonder what on earth they do over there. It's not just for the youth when they were young. Retreating is for everyone. And as I mentioned, even Jesus retreated. When he retreated, he went with others. You don't have to go alone. You could grow with a group of women. You could go, as the board did, with a group of us all focusing on drawing back to God. Or you could take a silent retreat or another form of retreat and go alone, just as Jesus did. Um, on the night Jesus was betrayed, as I was mentioning, mentioning this Easter, I realized that Jesus took retreats. On the night he was betrayed, after the Last Supper, the Bible mentions that the disciples went to the Mount of Olives in Matthew 26. And then in Matthew 26, 30, Jesus said, sit here while I go over there and pray. So he took his disciples with him, but then yet he still went off by himself where he was alone. So who can go on a retreat? You, and you can go with your, you can go alone or you can go with others. The second point is the where. Where do you go to retreat? Basically, wherever you can listen. Um, when I was, 
a little girl, as I've shared before, um, I was lucky enough to get to live in England for several years. My parents were missionaries there, and um, my dad worked in the doing the computer, the office side of things. And where we actually got to live was, and I didn't actually put this all together in my head because I was younger until I was working on this, is we actually lived on a retreat center. It was a 52-acre estate that had been had been a big, you know, old English estate that had been deeded by, into a trust by the family that had had it and then no longer owned it, been deeded to be used by a Christian organization. So most of this estate was used by a Christian organization as a retreat center and people would come in and use the big mansion house and all this stuff. And also on this estate were several houses and some office buildings and that area, those places were rented out basically to the mission organization my parents were with. So as a little girl, I got to live on this amazing 52-acre walled in, so safe place for me to run around. Mom didn't have to worry about me. Basically, 52-acre yard. And so when I was little, I would tell Mom, you know, I'm going to my thinking spot. And I had several of these little thinking spots around this retreat center. Um, one of them near the tennis court was a little cement overlook with some, some cement, cement steps. So I could go up there and look out over the gorgeous English green um, field full of sheep and just sit and look at the lake and the sun setting and for me I like being in nature. So maybe your where, where you go to listen to God, is outdoors in nature. Um, and then Michelle talked about being a morning person, being an evening person. Time of day works as well. At my house, I tend to be more of a night owl and so I get my silence when the girls are asleep. Um, some of you may find your time to listen is early in the morning. Some of you may find it's in the quiet in the middle of the day, your lunch break, in your car, you take a walk. You're where, wherever you can go to listen. And maybe it's indoors. Maybe nature isn't your thing. You have a favorite room in your house. Um, back to the idea of Mother's Day. I heard this a couple months ago. Um, the favorite room of a mom in the house. Kitchen, bedroom. It's the bathroom. Moms are all nodding. They're like, yeah, of course it is. Because that's where you can shut the door and have your retreat. And I got a lot of my ideas for this message. I get a lot of my ideas in the shower where the water's running and I can't hear anybody and the door's shut and no one's bothering me. So maybe it's a favorite room in your house. Or maybe it's even a more designated place like a retreat center on the women's retreat or up at St. Joseph or someplace like that. So if that interests anyone, um, see me or any of the elders and we can get you information on the St. Joseph's Retreat Center. So where can you retreat? Wherever you can listen. Now we're moving on to the why. Why retreat? What's the point? We go back to our verse, which says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So why do we go on retreats? So that we can align with God's will. Okay, I have an analogy for you for a minute. I want you to think of yourself as a submarine. Okay, a submarine can be two places. It can be in the water, or it can be on the land. And I want you to think of the water as the world. So you're the submarine, you can either be on the land or you can be in the water in the world. Being on the land, submarines, not a whole lot of good. We're not, God does not call us to be outside of the world. God calls us to be in the world, in the water. But as a submarine, in the world, in this water, we leak. We're surrounded by the world, we're surrounded by worldly things, worldly ideas, every day. And as we're surrounded by the world, we leak and that water comes into our sub. We need to be a sub full of air, full of God. So we retreat to draw back to God, to align with his will, so that we can get that water out of our sub and be a sub full of air, full of God. Because when that water comes into our sub, we start to view things of the world through the world's eyes. We see things on TV, our friends say things, we see things in the store we want, we need all the different ideas of the world that do not align with God's will. And that concept is called worldview, how you view the world. And in order for us to view the world through God's eyes, 
we need to take time to retreat, to draw back to him, so that our will can be aligned with his will, and we can see the world and the things around us through God's eyes, understand his will. Um, Jesus did this, again, back to the retreat in the Garden of Gethsemane after the Lord's Supper. In Luke chapter 22, verse 42, it's, Jesus said, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. So in Jesus' time of retreat, he was, he was asking God to align Jesus' will with God's will. He was asking their wills to align. So that's why we take this time of retreat. And um, also in Proverbs chapter 2, verses 10 through 13, it says, For wisdom will enter your mind, and knowledge will delight your heart. Discretion will watch over you, and understanding will guard you, rescuing you from the way of evil from the one who says perverse things, from those who abandon the right paths, to walk, who walk in ways of darkness. So retreating will get you to align with God's will and will take you away from those wrong paths, the people with perverse thoughts. The next thing we move on to is the when. The when's pretty short and sweet. When? Often. If we go back to that um, sub-analogy, your sub is always leaking, it's always filling with water. So you need to retreat often to get that water back out so you can be full of God and be aligned with his will. I want to give you another concept to think about. Think about when you go to a movie theater or a dark room. When you first walk in, you're surrounded by darkness and you can't see anything. Then once you've been in there for a little while, your eyes start to adjust to that darkness and you can find your way to your seat or if it's a dark room at home, you can find your way around. Then once that movie's over, you go back out in the daylight and you suddenly can't see again. You are blinded by the light. So if you think of retreating and being in the world and, and um, when you need to retreat, and you need to retreat often because just as your eyes adjust to that darkness in a dark room, your thoughts, your ideas, your view of the world adjusts to the world, adjusts to the darkness and the sin of the world. And then when you go out into the light, you're aligned with God's will, everything is bright and clear. So you need to retreat often because just as your eyes adjust in the dark, you quickly adjust to the ways of the world. You don't even realize that you hear somebody say something, you're like, yeah, that makes sense, and you don't realize that's completely not what God says, and you internalize it and make it part of what you do. So you need to retreat often. The last point is how. So we've talked about, let me go back so I get it all in the right order. We've talked about the what, retreat is drawing back to God. We've talked about the who, you alone or with others. We've talked about the where, wherever you can listen. We've talked about the when, which is often. And so now we're going to move on to the how, which is go and seek God. So what do you do first? I don't know, but I would say first, Find a place. We talked about that where you can go to listen. You, you know when, what, what I was saying, one of those places that jumped out, or more than one. You know your place. So find your place. Second, you need to be intentional. If this is going to be a treat, retreat using the second definition of retreat, if you are drawing to God, not just running away from the world, it needs to be intentional. So you're not just running off into the bathroom so you don't have to listen to the kids. Not that kind of retreat. This is a drawing back to God kind of retreat. So you're running into the bathroom, and you also need to be intentional in keeping your eyes and your heart open. Because we can go, and we can say, okay, God, I want to hear you, la, 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 but I really don't because I'm afraid you're going to talk to me. And that's really easy to do. So you also need to make sure that you have your, your heart ears open. And the other suggestion I would have is take your Bible. Um, in Hebrews 4, chapter chapter 4, verse 12, refers to the scripture as, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So scripture will help you to judge the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So how do you retreat? Be intentional and take your Bible with you. And I'd like to uh, give you a verse of comfort from Jeremiah 29, 13, which says, 
you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. So God promises that when you do go and you do draw back to him and you do seek him, that he promises that you will find him when you seek him with all of your heart. Please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for thank you for retreat. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to be able to draw back to you. I pray that you will be with everyone here, that you will guide us to take those times of retreat whenever we need them, as often as we need them, and that you will um, help us to open our eyes to hear your voice and to align your will with ours so that we can see the world through, through your eyes. Thank you for the places in nature that you've given us and the ways that you use nature and the world around us to speak to us. Thank you for your word that is living and active, that you use to, to talk to us in the here and in the now. May we listen to those words. And may we take time to draw back to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Close with a benediction, which is the, um, the, the verse from Romans 12, 2. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And Emily is going to close us out in the uh, same special music that she led us with earlier. And I also want to remind all of the women of the church to um, please take a flower with you.